I want to introduce to you Bob Bendick. Many of you know him from the Nature Conservancy, who will introduce us to a tape from Secretary of Agriculture Vilsack and to Undersecretary, a speech from Undersecretary Krista Hart. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bob Bendick. <clears throat> the Gulf of Mexico Program Director of the Nature Conservancy and the chair of something called the Practitioners Network for Large Landscape Conservation, one of the organizers of this meeting. On behalf of the network, thank you Chairman Mike Boots uh, for joining us today and welcome all. We're pleased that you can participate in what we hope will be an exciting cutting edge uh, discussion over the next two days. Thanks also to Jim Levitt and the Lincoln Institute for Land Policy and Joel Dunn and the Chesapeake Bay Conservancy for their organization's important roles in making this event possible. Thanks to the program committee and its chair, Greg Wathen, and to all the sponsors and particularly to the federal agencies who have contributed to this event and do such an important job in saving our nation's land and water. As a local and state official, and then with the Nature Conservancy, I've been privileged to be involved in large landscape conservation in the northeast and southeast regions of this country, beginning in the Blackstone Valley of Massachusetts and Rhode Island in the 1970s. For me, several lessons have emerged from participating in hundreds of meetings with citizens and stakeholders and from experiencing both false starts and some inspiring successes. First, large landscapes are defined both in scientific and cultural terms. People do care about and are willing to act on behalf of places larger than the immediate political jurisdictions where they live. There is a remarkable increase in stakeholder-driven large landscape conservation activity across the country. Second, while the art and science of large landscape conservation is still changing and emerging, there is a growing recognition, as others have said, um, among conservation scientists and the broader society, that conserving large areas through a variety of means is the most likely way of saving habitat, nature services, cultural traditions, and viable economies in a changing world. And third, importantly, individual leadership makes a huge difference. The leaders of successful landscape conservation projects, whether they are citizens or government officials, play a critical role when they have the ability and commitment to help diverse communities work cooperatively to shape, the shape their futures over the long run. As with many landscape scale conservation efforts themselves, the Practitioners Network for Large Landscape Conservation was created in 2011 from the bottom up by a group of individuals and agency representatives from across the US who with the help of the Lincoln Institute and the University of Montana believed that they could share conservation lessons, that their own work and that of others could be improved and advanced by building the knowledge and capacity of individuals, agencies, and organizations to work at the landscape scale by promoting ideas and policies to make landscape scale conservation easier and more successful. The network continues to grow in size and impact. We invite you to join the more than 800 individuals and organizations who are already participating, here's an advertisement, by signing up on our website at www.largelandscapenetwork.org. This workshop is designed to advance this same, these same goals. Toward that end, I am pleased to introduce a video from Tom Vilsack the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Since his two terms as governor of Iowa and the earliest days of his tenure as secretary, Tom Vilsack has championed a watershed or ecosystem approach to conservation. This conviction has produced 
tangible accomplishments by his terrific team at USDA. Collaborative landscape forest restoration to protect watersheds, restore forest health, reduce catastrophic fires, and protect wildlife. Conserving landscapes through the Farm Bill by deploying NRCS's resources to ad address conservation challenges in places like the Chesapeake Bay, the Mississippi River, the Great Lakes, and the Gulf of Mexico, where I work, and looking across whole landscapes to address climate change. Following the video presentation, we are very privileged to have Deputy USDA Secretary Krista Hardin here with us. Krista has had several important leadership roles at USDA and came to the agency in 2009 from the National Association of Conservation Districts, one of the great grassroots networks of citizen conservationists in this country. Uh, I know Krista, and she is a terrific person who will do a wonderful job here today. So first, the video from Secretary Vilsack. Thank you all. Hello, I'm Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for the crucial work you do to preserve and protect our nation's most valuable resources, our land, air, and water. Although I cannot be with you today, I'm pleased that USDA Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin is here. Deputy Hardin brings a wealth of experience and an outstanding record of advocacy for conservation to the table. Deputy Secretary Hardin and I share a passion for the land, and I am pleased that she can be here to learn and to share with you on behalf of USDA. My message today is simple. We do better when we work together. Landscape scale natural resource concerns like species conservation and water quality don't stop at county or state lines. They are most effectively addressed when we look beyond geopolitical boundaries and focus the full force of our resources on the most pressing conservation issues. This is something that everybody in the room understands. The large crowd today spanning the public, private, nonprofit, and academic spheres means that there is an overwhelming demand for large landscape conservation methods, a momentum that we support at USDA. Together, you've worked with the USDA on large-scale projects to improve water quality in the Great Lakes, reduce the decline of the Okalaw Aquifer, and enhance habitat for keystone species like the greater sage-grouse and the gopher tortoise, just to name a few. The 2014 Farm Bill gave us a new tool in the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, which puts landscape scale conservation efforts front and center. RCPP draws in partners from government, nonprofits, business, and local communities, and allows them to work together to leverage resources for comprehensive conservation projects. The initial response to RCPP has been overwhelming. Nearly 5,000 partners, many of them in this room today, came together to submit nearly 600 pre-proposals to USDA earlier this year. From that group, a smaller group of projects recently submitted full proposals for consideration. We are now in the process of reviewing those applications and selecting finalists to receive funding. While USDA itself does not have the resources to fully fund every worthy project, perhaps most importantly, RCPP starts a conversation between partners to identify how best to address the key conservation needs in their area and lays the groundwork for future large-scale conservation efforts. USDA itself has invested more than $12.5 billion since 2009 to support effective conservation tools and strategies. But we know that in order to make the headway against the water, soil, and air quality issues that threaten future productivity of the land, we will need every partner on board and every available resource at work to tackle these issues. You are each invaluable partners to USDA. I encourage you to keep up the good work and to continue to seek out new resources and innovative approaches to work with USDA to meet large landscape conservation goals. I want to thank you for all that you're doing to drive innovative, collaborative, and lasting approaches to conservation work across our great country. Now, Deputy Secretary Hardin. Thank you, Krista, for coming today. Good morning. You know, Secretary Vilsack is a hard act to follow even when he's in video. 
Um, he is just a terrific guy, and we are so lucky at USDA and really in the entire administration to have someone who just gets it, who has that kind of passion and sets the tone really for all of us at USDA. But, you know, it, he, it starts with him, but I want to make sure everyone realizes it goes very, very deep within our department, this love and commitment um, to this agenda and working with all of you. I think you all probably know Robert Bonney, our undersecretary, who works in this area. His two right hands, Ann Mills and Butch Blazer, I think will be around the, the conference or the workshop over the next two days. Both of our chiefs, Jason Weller at NRCS and Chief Tidwell at the Forest Service. And I'm even lucky to have my own chief of staff, Tina May, who helped craft um, the Farm Bill Title II, the conservation title for Senator Stabenow. So we, from top to bottom, are committed to working with you in this agenda. I know some of you, I see some friendly faces in the audience, folks I've known a very long time and I have worked with um, over the years, whether I was at NACD or with um, farm groups or on Capitol Hill. But for those who don't know me, I thought I would take just a few minutes to tell you about how I learned about conservation. And it was not in this town. It was on a farm in Southwest Georgia where my parents still live. So when I say I'm going home, it's not to um, a condo in Old Town Alexandria where I live now. It's to a dirt road and a farm, basically in the middle of nowhere. And how I heal and how I feel better and re-energized as much as I can get down there, all the woes and the troubles and the things that you go through in this town is to be on the land. Farm with my daddy a little bit see how things are growing, see what's happening on the land, walking through the woods, except during hunting season, of course, <laughs> seeing what's happening, being amazed at the things, the animals that are returning to our farm and our land that were not there for many years, fox, wild turkey, bobwhite quail, things that for a time we planted fence row to fence row and we thought that was the thing to do. But we know better now in agriculture. We have learned tough lessons. And the fact is we have learned and we are doing better. So when I go home to feel better, to feel connected, I see things I didn't see. And it's because of the efforts and the commitment from folks like you in this room. But frankly, it's because of many, many landowners, farmers and ranchers who also care about our natural resources, who also want to make sure that their operations are not only producing food, maybe fiber, maybe fuel, but also home. The hat to wildlife, clean water, cleaner air. So I just wanted you to think about all the people across the country who give so much back by feeding us. Some of us may be a little bit too much but they really are committed. I have really watched the change in the mindset, the growth, the maturity, and a lot of thinking about what's happening on the land. I remember when I interviewed for a job in conservation, one of the questions for all of us who were interviewing was what is your definition of conservation? And a lot of people stumbled. Because you need that sound bite quick answer to really grab people. And mine was wise use of our natural use resources. And I emphasize use because we are going to use them. We're going to use them to grow things. We're going to use them as habitat. We're going to use them for recreation. We're going to use them for a lot of different things. But it's how we use them. It's with the mindset that we use them. It's with the results that we want when we use them that really matters. We are so lucky in our country to have the vast resources that we have. Some are in production, some are not. Some are protected, some are not. But it's great to see this many people come together for a couple of days to talk about how we do it better. We already have great successes. I think about the sage grouse. I actually saw a sage grouse in Wyoming, and I was told at the time that that was pretty unusual to actually see one. It was terrific. I think about what we have done coming together to make a difference with landowners so they're protected. The Land and Water Conservation Fund, another great success that takes this partnership 
and many others to make sure that it's viable. I think about forest restoration, how critical that is for all of us and how, how the, the successes that we have are because of people like you. Secretary Vilsack mentioned another great opportunity that we have because of the Farm Bill, and that is the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. A really kind of cool idea that's been out there a long time, but probably not as articulated in a way that really helps everyone understand what it is. And instead of there being concerns of bringing others to the table to talk about conversation, this is encourages it. It demands it, that there are more people coming together, working together, leveraging resources, using all that we have, all of our talents, all of our dollars, to make a difference in large landscape conservation. We did, the Secretary outlined how many applications we have, and they are great, really, really exciting ideas. I can't wait till we're able to roll them out and talk about them, and more importantly, to see the work on the ground. Great opportunities. I encourage those of you who have not been involved to get involved and make sure that you're part of this great opportunity. We did other things in the Farm Bill that really streamlined our processes and made sure that we can have much greater access to the tools that USDA does have. For the first time, more money will be spent in conservation than in the Title I programs. That's a huge shift and change in our country and our support for farmers and ranchers and what they do. It's very exciting for us at USDA, many of us like me who have worked in this arena for a very long time, to see that changing, that shifting, recognizing how valuable our resources can be and how who controls them, who uses them, who's thinking about them really does matter. You've heard this morning from Mr. Boots, you've heard from the Secretary, and you know it firsthand, the challenges that we have for our natural resources. We talk about climate change, we talk about environmental stressors, uses of our great land, the exploding population around the world, the need for food, the need for space. How are we going to be ready? How can we work together to make sure that we are ready? I think that's some of the issues your workshop is going to address. And just what I want to leave you with is a couple things. First is thank you. The Secretary said it. Other speakers have said it. From USDA's point of view, we thank you. We need you. We want you as a partner. We want to work with you. We want to be shoulder to shoulder with our friends and the federal government a great working relationship with the Department of Interior. We stand side by side. We work with other agencies and the White House to make sure all the tools are there, all the messages are consistent, and that we can help each other. But we need you. You're really who matters. The people, the taxpayers, the folks who have the influence, the folks who are going to make a difference, who are going to move policy, who are going to change minds and make a difference. But thank you also for what you've already done, for the great successes that we've had. We just need to measure them more. We need to have a matrix. We need to have more data and less anecdotal ideas. We need to be able to explain what we're doing in sound bites. We need to communicate through social media and ways that young people, the only way they get their news now. We need to be able to talk about these issues in a way that's non-threatening but in encouraging and, and inclusive and bring people in cities and in small towns and on country roads like mine to the same place. So thank you for all your effort. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the partnership. We do have a long way to go, but it's very encouraging to go back to that farm in southwest Georgia and know that we have come a long way. So thank you. Thank you for letting me be here and enjoy your two days in D.C.